let us offer up a prayer. For we are the cupbearers, and here at our side are two fountains flowing. One which is wisdom is a sober draught in which no wine mingles. It is temperate and healthful. The other, which is pleasure, may be likened to a fountain of honey. Out of these, the fairest of all possible mixtures must be sought. Tell me, is the good life most likely to be found if every sort of wisdom is mingled with every sort of pleasure? I, for my part, should be afraid of the risk and suggest a safer plan, for one science is more certain than another, and one pleasure more pure than another. If, then, we consider the subdivisions of wisdom and of pleasure which are most pure and mingle them, will the union suffice to give us the best of lives? Imagine a man who has an understanding of the true nature of things. Will he have enough wisdom if he is acquainted only with pure geometry and knows nothing of our human circles and spheres? Surely not. We must mix into the good life the practical part of geometry which uses the imperfect circle, as does the builder, that is, if any of us is ever to find his way home. The time has come to decide about the pleasures. Can we in like manner admit them all, or only the pure ones? First, mix the pure ones. That will be the sounder course. And now, if there are any other pleasures, as there were practical sciences, they must be mingled in. Let us ask the daughters of pleasure themselves. They would certainly answer that for any class to be alone in perfect solitude is not good, nor altogether possible. Let us now interrogate the daughters of wisdom, asking them if, in addition to the pure pleasures, they wish to have the most vehement pleasures for their companions. They will say, how can we? Seeing that they are the source of 10,000 hindrances to us, they trouble the souls of men which are our habitations with their madness. They prevent our ideas, our children, from coming to birth and are the ruin of them when they do come to birth. But the pure pleasures of which you spoke know these to be of our kindred. These pleasures which accompany health and temperance are the handmaidens and inseparable attendants of wisdom. Mingle these but not the others. Anyone who wishes to devise the highest good for man would show a great lack of sense to allow the pleasures which are always in the company of folly and vice to mingle with mind. There is yet something more that must be added to our formula of the good life. For unless truth enters into the composition, nothing can be worthy. And now we are close to that which is the cause of every good and universally beloved. I mean symmetry, which renders every mixture of the highest value. Let us ask if in the order of the universe, symmetry is more akin to wisdom or to pleasure. Every reasonable man knows that any want of symmetry in any mixture must of necessity be fatal both to the elements and to the mixture. Thus, the nature of all good things has retired into the region of the beautiful, for symmetry or measure everywhere passes into beauty. The elements of the good life have now been found, and we must proclaim everywhere, sending messengers of these tidings far and wide, that pleasure is not the first of possessions, nor yet the second. Symmetry stands in first place with the beautiful in the second, and if I divine aright, we must reckon truth in the third class. Finally, wisdom takes fourth place with the pure pleasures taking the fifth. This is true even if all the animals of the world, in their pursuit of enjoyment, should affirm differently.